So I'm Christine Roxburgh. I'm, I'm the chief executive of the patient association in the UK called Eczema Outreach Support. I'm also a patient. I've had eczema all my life, and I suppose that's what makes me really passionate about my job. Um, in the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to be speaking about um, what healthcare professionals and a patient organisation can do together um, to increase the self-management of patients. So um, I wanted to kind of touch on how an uh, eczema patient would be treated in the UK because we've got people from is it 22 different countries here today. So we're very lucky in the UK to have a national health service where healthcare is free. And um, after hearing some of the other presentations today, I realised just how lucky we are to have that. Um, prescriptions um, are also free for children and for some adults, um, depending on where you live in the UK. So that means your emollients and the moisturisers would be free. Um, now, there's not a lot of choice, but you would be able to get something for free. And hearing how different that is to somewhere like Africa and uh, most other countries, um, we're very privileged indeed. Access to dermatology specialists, you know, can be very difficult, um, although not as difficult as it seems to be in Africa. Um, the vast majority of people will only ever see their GP if they've um, got eczema. And the problem is that GPs aren't really trained in how to treat eczema. Um, if they're given any training at all in eczema, it's really just how to, how to spot a medical emergency when it comes to eczema. They're really not given any education um, and told how to, how to educate their patients about how to manage eczema. There is very long waiting lists for dermatology. Um, in Northern Ireland, it's about three years at the moment to see a dermatologist. Um, and often suspected skin cancer is prioritized over um, someone with a, a chronic condition such as um, eczema. And overall, there is a shortage of dermatologists in the UK, um, many training in the NHS, but moving into private practice um, so they don't ever see NHS patients. We do have dermatology nurses when someone accesses a dermatology service, and they do provide excellent education clinics, but it is a, a very small number of people that actually do get to see a dermatologist and a dermatology nurse. So we do have a private healthcare system as well, and people can pay to, to see a dermatologist. Um, and we're seeing more families, more patients than ever, um, using savings to go to see a dermatologist because the waiting times are getting longer and longer, particularly after COVID. Um, so like we've already heard today, um, I think one thing about eczema is people do um, try to find something that is possibly going to try and cure the condition, as we've just heard. And um, you know, people do go and buy lots of other products to try alongside maybe what they've been prescribed um, from their dermatologist or GP um, or garments or really anything, anything at all to try and help. So I mentioned that I'm from Eczema Outreach Support. So what do we do? So we mainly help children and young people with eczema, um, a patient organisation, but we're a membership organisation, so a bit different from um, uh, the way Julie mentioned in um, America. So people have to join our organisation, but all our services are free, so it doesn't cost anything to join. Um, we support at the moment about 3,800 children with eczema and their families, and that's across the whole of the UK. So Scotland, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. And like Julie mentioned, we don't offer medical advice, but we offer emotional and practical support. And we talk through some of the, those treatment decisions that we've been um, hearing a lot about this morning, um, and just offering tips on how to manage the day-to-day -day burden of having eczema. We take a very personalised approach to each family um, and we build a relationship with them. So for many families, we support them for years um, over some of the, the different um, difficulties that their child might be having. So difficulties at school related to eczema, difficulties maybe in finding a treatment, bullying, sleep, lots of different issues that we'll talk to a family about. Um, we're very much focused on breaking isolation, so bringing families together, um, making them feel that they're not alone, and also the same for children, making sure that they realise they're not the only child with eczema, and building confidence and ensuring families really just feel generally supported. And we're really inclusive. We try to make sure that we can help um, as broad a range of families as possible. So we've helped refugee families and children in the care system, as well as families that find us um, through our website. And we very much see ourselves as complementing the work of medical professionals. 
So how we help, so we provide educational resources and practical tools to families. So when they, they join the charity, um, they receive a box through the post, which has um, lots of um, self-management tools. So for children, we send them things like these fiddle toys um, to keep hands busy instead of scratching. Um, we also send children things like this treatment tracker to try and get them engaged and involved in their treatment for eczema so they can fill it in when they put their creams on. We would also send children um, books. So this one's called Ichisaurus, which is about a dinosaur who has eczema. Um, and again, it's just to get the child interested in their eczema and hopefully reduce the battles that um, we usually hear about from parents um, about getting emollients and creams on. So all our resources are developed in collaboration with, with the patients um, and they're underpinned by health psychology. So that means that a health psychologist goes through the material and makes sure that it's written in a way to try and have the best chance of behaviour change from, um, from all our materials. So in addition to the resources, we offer one-to-one -one support um, to the families that join our service. And that's not face-to-face. -face. It's done over the phone or on Teams or Zoom or email, whatever suits the, the, the families, really. And we discuss lots of things. Um, some of the things that we've already heard of today, if a, an immunosuppressant drug's maybe been suggested by the dermatologist, a family maybe would really value talking that through, and we've got the time um, to be able to do that with a family. Or it could just be um, passing on tips that other families have found have really helped. One of the most popular one is um, putting things in the fridge, such as a child's teddy bear or, or pyjamas, before the child goes to bed so that their pyjamas are really cold when they put them on. They may sound silly, but parents really love hearing these kind of practical tips that can actually make a difference to their day-to-day -day lives. And it gives them something to try other than just the, the treatments. We are, the way the charity started really, and something that's really important to us is bringing families together, connecting families. So we have face-to-face oh, uh, -face family events. Now, the past couple of years, obviously with COVID, that has changed. We've not been able to meet um, families face-to-face, -face, but actually we're having our first face-to-face -face family event this Saturday in Scotland. So we're really excited um, to bring families back together and children back together so they can see each other and see other children with eczema. So we run webinars where we bring healthcare professionals and we do that at our family events as well. We always have a dermatologist there or a psychologist there um, that can um, educate families. We have a vibrant closed Facebook group and also run peer group sessions. We also go into schools and run school workshops because we know that school can be a really difficult environment for children with eczema. Quite often they can be bullied or you know, other children maybe don't want to hold their hand or think that they're going to catch eczema. So we go into schools and run school workshops and we have training modules for teachers and other resources. And then we develop a whole load of self-management resources for children and young people. And we have three different age brackets. We have our High Five Club, which is young, younger children, primary school. We have XY Club, which is for teenagers. And we have things like an Instagram chat forum that they can speak to each other. We tried an app actually but it wasn't very useful so I'm thinking maybe teenagers you know have moved past apps and um, prefer social media and um, we also have a youth panel now they're aged 16 to 24 they actually come along to our board meetings and are very involved in setting the strategy of our of, of the charity so we've been up and running now about 10 years and working with healthcare professionals has been something that's evolved over that time. In the initial years, really, it was very much about letting healthcare professionals knew, um, know that the charity existed and what we did. And it's taken time to build credibility and build trust and allow healthcare professionals to feel comfortable to signpost families to come and speak to us as an organisation. We've tried lots of different ways to raise awareness of the organisation, but we have found the best way is if we've um, worked with a family and then they go to speak to their GP or their dermatologist and mention us, actually the, that's the, the best way for a dermatologist to take interest in the charity and they'll then go on to signpost more families um, to the charity.
And now we're able to um, participate in you know, really important um, forums alongside um, the dermatology community in the UK, such as the British Association of Dermatologists. So healthcare professionals now do signpost to us and um, they also participate in our work, they sit on our board um, and um, we are asked to participate in their work as well. But there's always more to do, there's um, always more to do on that front and there's always um, more healthcare professionals to meet. I wanted to give you an example of, these are quotes from our members and I thought they would maybe highlight the way that healthcare professionals and a patient organisation can work together. So the first quote here says, my friend found eczema outreach, which is our organization, for me when we were at our lowest point just prior to the first lockdown in March 2020. And thank goodness she did, as the conversation I had with one of your staff after joining was a real changing point for us. After talking it through, we tried ointment instead of cream, and my then six-month-old finally let um, us put it on without being in hysterics. We didn't access dermatology services until August 2020, so the support from the charity was invaluable. So sometimes we bridge the gap between someone who's maybe waiting to see a dermatologist and really is feeling very helpless and doesn't know what to do. We can talk through, do a bit of education and a bit, um, you know, talk through what it's like to, to care for a child and what good self-management looks like. The second quote here, speaking to eczema outreach on the phone was a turning point. They had so many tips and I was at breaking point with sleep deprivation and to know they understood was honestly better than any doctor. I think this just shows it's useful to have someone else to talk to, another organisation to talk to who has a bit, maybe a bit more time and can just um, talk things through, pass on these tips that I was mentioning and just say it's okay, we understand um, and you're not the only one experiencing this. And then lastly, um, the last quote there, when I called um, Eczema Outreach, we discussed the treatment plan and tips for managing day to day. It gave me confidence to try the new prescribed treatments from dermatology and also gave me the courage to keep going. I hadn't realized how lonely I actually felt in this experience. So for there, I thought it was useful to highlight that quite often we're talking um, to the patients that contact us about the treatments that they've been given by the GP or the dermatologist. And we're just able to reinforce, talk it through with them, give them the confidence to try it and use it. And it's, um, they find that really valuable. So I suppose, what is the value of patient organisations? I suppose we've maybe got a little bit more time to listen and learn and educate and actually respond to the individual needs. We can hear the individual story and you usually do get the life story um, and be able to educate based on, on what they actually need. We can talk to the families before they come to healthcare appointments um, and um, help them think about what they really want to find out from their dermatologist or GP, empower them to ask the questions that they really want in healthcare appointments. We can also develop um, the engaging resources for self-management and bring a range of experts to talk and educate members because the vast majority of people only ever see a GP in the UK, to bring dermatologists along to events and have webinars is really valued. Um, and most importantly, I think, of all, is we facilitate that peer support, so patients being able to speak to other patients and swap tips and encourage each other as well, um, maybe to try different treatments. And we can signpost to other services and resources if we are not able to help. And obviously I've talked about some of the ways that we um, look to engage children. And one of the ways we do that is, especially when um, you know, families are across the UK, one of the ways um, for engaging children is to develop animations. And I wanted to share with you our latest animation, which is still in development, why, and that's why it doesn't have a title yet, <laughs> why it just says title. <laughs> this is hot off the press, um, not quite finished, but the main animation is actually finished, um, and I wanted to share it with you. So this is to send out to children to make them feel that they're not the only one with eczema and also squeeze in a few tips there that might help them manage their own condition. Hello? Is anyone there? Ah, there you are. Hi everyone, I'm Arlo and I'm eight years old. I'm in the High Five Club, just like you. We all have something in common. Can you guess what it is? Yes, you're right. We all have eczema. The High Five Club is part of Eczema Outreach Support and it's for kids aged three all the way up to ten who have eczema. Let's meet some of our High Five Club friends. I'm Kira and I'm six. 
I have eczema and I'm from England. I'm Chloe and I'm nine. I have eczema and I'm from Scotland. I'm Sam, I'm ten, I have eczema and I'm from Northern Ireland. I'm Asha, I'm five years old, I have eczema and I live in Wales. Wow, I thought it was only me who had eczema. There are lots of us who have it. Does anyone know how many children have eczema in the UK? Ten. A billion. Five hundred? Not quite. There are literally over 2.5 million children with eczema across Scotland, England, Northern Ireland and Wales. Wow, I didn't know there were so many as I don't know of anyone in my class. There's no one in my class either and they always ask me if they can catch my eczema. If someone asks me that, I tell them that eczema is a skin condition and that lots of children have it. And it's not contagious. That means you can't catch it. I just say I have eczema. Thanks guys, great ideas. Does your skin ever feel dry, itchy and sore? Mine does and it can be very annoying. Definitely! I have eczema all the way from head to toes and it's so itchy and annoying, just like a meerkat. Let's think about what our eczema might feel like if it was an animal. It's like bugs crawling all over my skin. Sometimes you can't feel it until there's lots. My eczema is like a snake, because my skin is shedding and scaly. Eczema is like a lion with fire coming out of its foot. It's really angry because it's hot and itchy. Maybe it would be a monkey. They always have their hands under their arms and it looks like they are itching just like me. <laughs> eczema is rough like an elephant. Sometimes my eczema can feel like all of these animals all on different days. But I know if I take good care of my skin and use my greens and medicines, then I feel more like me. I know it's important to look after my skin, but it can be so annoying getting greens on every day. Do you ever feel like this? Yeah, my greens feel so uncomfortable when I get them on. I have an idea. Why don't we decorate our tubs of cream and give them cool names? We can even pretend they have special powers. Mine is going to be Superpower Shield Cream because it helps protect my skin. What would yours be? My magic cooling spray. Superhero cream. My amazing high five cream. Epic ideas. What if I don't feel like putting my cream on? I sometimes feel like this too, but if I put my creams next to my toothbrush, it reminds me to put them on. And I sing this song too. Oh, I've got a nifty patch. I'm trying not to scratch. Instead, I'll try to patch you up like my friends on my high five club. Let's put all our creams on and sing a high five song. Now give yourself a great big cheer, so i for all to hear. High five! High five! We're in the high five club! Thanks, Kira. We're a cool song. I love it! I've got another idea. We could put dots of cream all over our body and see how fast we can rub it in. Are you ready? Go! Wow, we all did great at getting our creams on and super fast too. Remember when you feel itchy? You can use your twisty to keep your hands busy. Or try patting your skin or even use a cool pack. What do you do when you feel itchy? I have a box of different fidget toys. When I feel itchy, I watch my favourite cartoon. I pat my skin when I feel itchy. Amazing, awesome ideas. We know that having eczema can be tough and can stop you from doing things you like. But remember, on the good days, we can still do lots of amazing things like running, jumping, playing with friends, playing football, or even flying to the moon. Always remember, you are not on your own. And your high five club friends understand what it's like to have eczema and how you might be feeling. 
Let's practice saying these things together. We are amazing. We are brilliant. We can do this. A big high five to everyone in a high five club. club. Thank you. Every time I see it, I still love it. Um, as you can imagine, it's taken quite a lot of time to develop that because it was um, our, uh, the kids that are part of our membership, it's their voices. So I don't know how many takes we had to do <laughs> of, those, of those voices. Um, just quickly to finish on, um, I just wanted to also make you aware of another project that we're working on, um, just to kind of demonstrate um, how us as a, an organisation work with healthcare professionals um, for the benefit of patients and self-management. So actually Peter um, mentioned earlier that he gives a, a kind of an action plan to each of his patients. Um, but in the UK, that, that doesn't happen for everybody. Um, so we've actually been um, developing an eczema treatment plan um, alongside 46 healthcare professionals, eczema patients and academics. Um, and it's been going on for a good number of months now. We're now in the design stage and we're really hopeful that that will really help um, patients be able to kind of self-manage and be much more informed about their treatments. So just in summary, um, I think it's really important healthcare professionals and patient organisations both have an important part to play um, in the self-management of patients. Um, it can take time for a patient organisation to build up the trust and, and reputation with healthcare professionals, but once they do, it's really worthwhile. Healthcare professionals obviously can sign pa post patients to us and other patient organisations. They can, they can ensure that a patient understands their treatment because so often we're talking to, to patients and they don't understand their treatment. And also recognise if there's any mental health concerns for that patient because more and more we're hearing, we're hearing that. And as a patient organisation, we can help to prepare a patient for appointments with healthcare professionals, help them understand, have confidence in their treatment and, and reinforce the kind of self-management message. Um, and really, the page, it's the patient that benefits from this joint approach between health, healthcare professionals and patient organisations. And I'll just leave you with one last quote from one of our members that said, speaking to others who weren't medical professionals but understood our battles was a sanity saver. Thank you.